Now to add a stroke to it, what we'll do is we'll go down here in the layers palette and we'll click on FX and then stroke. And I like the position to be center, but you could also do it inside or outside of the shape. And you can increase or decrease the stroke size. You can of course change the color here. If you click on color, you can make it any color you want. And you could change the opacity if you like. Let's take a look at how to draw another kind of bubble with a curved point here. So we'll go through the same process again. We'll take the rounded rectangle shape. We'll go ahead and draw our shape. We'll go to the pen tool. We'll make sure that we are combining shape. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to do three points just like last time. And then close it by tapping on the end point. Then if you look under the pen tool, there is add anchor point. It'll let us add a couple points right next to each other, right in the middle where you want the bend to be. We want to go to the direct selection tool so that we can move those two points. You could either move the bend or you could move the end point. However you like. And then we'll go ahead and put a stroke on that with FX stroke. Now if you find a particular stroke style that you like and you want to just copy and paste it, what you can do is you can right click on the layer that the effect is applied to and you can choose copy layer style and then the next time that you draw a shape and you want to apply that same effect to it you can right click on that layer and you can do paste layer style and there automatically you get that exact same effect. Next let's take a look at how to do the connected bubbles. We'll go ahead and select our rounded rectangle shape. We'll draw our shape We'll look under the rounded rectangle tool for the line tool. You want to make sure that this is set to shape. You want the fill to be white, stroke to be none. Then you want to be combining shapes. Go ahead and draw. You'll go back to your rounded rectangle and draw your other rounded rectangle. Again, you should have one single layer that contains all of these different shapes. If you use the path selection tool, you can go ahead and move each of the shapes around wherever you want. You can use the direct selection tool if you want to go ahead and move your line. And again, if you want to curve your line, what you want to do is look under the pen tool for the add anchor point. Go ahead and make two points right next to each other. Go back to the direct selection tool and go ahead and move those points. Let's go ahead and add a stroke to that. I'm going to right click and just paste that layer style that I had before. And you can see our word bubble. Forgot to add a point, but that's okay. If we want to go ahead and add a point after the fact, what we can do is we can go to the pen tool. Again, to make sure you're combining shapes, you're going to have to make sure to look at this every time or you're going to create a new layer and that's not what you want to do. So combine shapes. Go ahead and do your three points and connect the end. And there you go. So that's the advantage to doing it this way with vectors is that it's all fully editable and you can really do anything you want without having to always redraw your bubbles. Let's take a look at how to do this fourth kind here which is a nested bubble which is nested inside and kind of goes behind one of the figures that's in the foreground here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ellipse tool this time to draw an oval just so we have some variety. And I'm going to use the pen tool to go ahead and make my points. And that time I forgot to change it to combine shapes. So look what happened here. I have these two independent shapes. What happens now is if I try to stroke these two shapes, we get something like this and it doesn't work. So I'm going to do some undos, go back to after I drew the ellipse, make sure that I change this to combine shapes for the pen tool and then I can safely make my points and they combine with that shape. I'll go ahead and apply the layer style to add a stroke and then we'll use the move tool to position this where we want. Let's go ahead and rotate it here like so. Holding shift to constrain it that way it's nice and level again and then let's say we want to flip it. Let's go to edit transform flip vertical Let's put it like right here. Now what we want to do is create a mask. I have my panels here on a separate layer, as you can see. So if I go to that panels group, 
I can go to this panels layer and I can use the magic wand to click within that panel to get a selection of that panel. I'll go back to my bubble layer and I'm going to group it and then I'm going to create a mask by clicking on the mask icon. And that's going to put it inside of my panel shape there. It's important that you group it first, otherwise you're going to get this weird edge where it tries to trim your bubble like this. And that might be an effect that could be kind of cool if you want something like that. A weird shape for one of your bubbles. 